Hello. Good to see you. All right, there, Revenants. Welcome back to Code Vein and episode 251 of the Road to 100, where today we are gonna kind of analyze the Bladebearer and the Cannoneer, as they are both um, very, 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 very difficult. Um, early on, they are difficult kind of in your mid-travels through Vein, and they are difficult even at the highest level. There is no... Um, how do I say this? If you want to completely annihilate them, you can one-shot her with Radiant Barrel, and you can quickly follow up and kill him uh, with a bayonet. However, if you don't want to do that, there's really no fast, simple, quick, easy, um, useful way to go about killing them. Both of them are extremely powerful, and they have huge amounts of HP. So first of all, we'll go through uh, their HP limits, and uh, then we'll move into resistances and um, um, what are those? Elements and then statuses. So first of all, the uh, HP level we'll go for is level one. So on level one, uh, Miss uh, Jiggle Physics over there has forty thousand. Uh, the upper limit is 400, 40,400. The lower limit is 40,300, so it's somewhere in between there. Uh, I would be willing to bet that it's 40,350, but uh, I, I don't uh, have a good number on that, but it's, it's just around the 40,400 mark. So if you keep that as your upper limit, then you know that you're in the space. So if you can do 40,400, you know you can kill her. Uh, for level 1 for this guy, or at 0 star I should say, he has a uh, HP limit of 60,600, so he is uh, quite tanky at this level of the game. As you've uh, gotten up to this point, you've fought things that have 30 and 40,000 HP, and then this guy comes along and he has 50% a a more health than what you've fought in the past. Now here at the highest level of the game at... Uh, plus 8 star and beyond. Um, she has 98,400 health, so she's a monster of a health bank all in her own right. But Chunky Boy over here is a, a massive tank. He has 148,200 HP as his upper limit, and I'm willing to bet that he's 148,150. Uh, he just has a massive amount, a massive amount of HP, which is why it's very difficult to one-shot kill him uh, with a bayonet. Now, and also, uh, it's very difficult to one-shot kill him with anything, really, because he has uh, some pretty good resistances all around, coupled with that huge amount of health. Uh, he, he takes a monster of a build to be able to take down in a one-shot, so... Uh, definitely be careful with him here on the highest star difficulty. So for her, we will start with her uh, weaknesses and such. Um, she has a plus 10% across the board flat resistance to all weapon damage types, flash, crush, and pierce. She, she has a 10% resistance to all of them equally, which is kind of interesting that there's no, um, there's no physical damage that she's weak to. Uh, she has a resistance across there. Then for her elements, she has a 0% resist to blood, so you can use blood against her as that gets you a 20% increase to your damage, so that can help offset the 10% um, reduction that you get from your weapon type. So let's say if you do 1000 damage and you have to multiply by 0.9 and then by 1.2 if you're using some other, uh, some, some blood weapon. Um, so then you get 1,080 as your damage value, so you are hitting for more than your your base value, which is nice. So that 20% from the blood weapon would definitely come in useful. Uh, moving down the elements, she has a 40% resist to ice, so don't use any ice against her. I think that's kind of obvious, but 40% uh, is a significant reduction. Um, and then for fire, she has a 10% weakness, so she has a minus 10% resistance to fire. So if you were using 
um, if we took that same 1,000 damage, 1,000 damage, times 0.9 for whatever damage type you're going to do. And let's say you did a fire uh, a fire type that would get you, or a fire weapon, the the gift fire weapon, a uh, flame weapon, you would get a 30% increase to your damage. So you would come up with 1170 um, because you would have 20% from the gift and then you would have 10% increase to your damage because of her weakness to fire. So very good to use fire against her. And then finally, lightning, she has a 0% resist to lightning as well. So for her, uh, what you want to go for is blood, fire, and lightning, mainly fire, uh, followed up by blood and lightning, and no ice. And as far as statuses go, she's, uh, oh, whoops, uh, no, I hit the space bar accidentally. Uh, she is, she, she's susceptible to all the uh, statuses out there, poison, inhibit, slow, and stun, and they go in that order. She's weakest to poison, uh, next to inhibit, the third is slow, and she's most resistant to stun. So if you're going for the blade bear, you want to do uh, blood, ice, blood, fire, lightning, and poison. Uh, those are the best sets of weaknesses that you can go for to take her down. Now, how those all fit into a build, I, I don't exactly know that yet, but uh, those are the weakest items that she is vulnerable to. Now for uh, Big Boy over here, he has a 25% resistance to Slash. So if you're going for any kind of one-handed weapons, uh, you want to go for the Argent Wolf Blade or the Pipe versus him, as those will be the most effective one-handed swords versus him. The others will be susceptible to his 25% Slash reduction, and you definitely don't want to be hampering yourself when you're fighting him because he is the one that can kill you even with elemental resist because he does physical damage. Then uh, moving down the list here, he has a 10% uh, resist to crush and he has a 10% resistance to pierce. So crush and pierce are the damage types you want to go for. No slash versus him. So definitely pick your weapon carefully. Now uh, for his elements, he does have a 20% resist to blood. He has a minus 10% weakness to ice. I guess that's kind of obvious as well, but well, we're saying it anyways. He has a 40% resist to fire. That should also be kind of obvious. So both of them are 40% resistant to their respective elements. And he has a 20% resistance to lightning. Now he as well is susceptible to all four status effects. and But he goes in sort of the opposite order of the blade bear. So his weakest is slow, followed by inhibit followed by poison, which is exactly the reverse of the um, blade bearer. So she's poison inhibit slow stun, and he's slow inhibit poison stun. So stun is the strongest resistance for both of them together, and um, you can, you can kind of think of them as they hold the strength of the other, but the cannoneer is a little bit opposite in that he has some higher resistance to slash. I think that's just because of his body shape and everything. Um, and uh, he does have some blood and lightning resistance, So whereas the uh, blade bearer does not. So that's uh, kinda kind of their rundown there. We'll put all this in the description of the video anyways. And if you were going for a build against them, running some kind of elemental resist paired with some kind of focus set is very very good because as soon as this uh, as soon as the blade or the cannoneer uh, throws down the flame pools and you can run into those you can get focused immediately you can get focused very very quickly so you can be focused throughout the fight mainly all the time and uh, so we could go for we could go for swift destruction or we could go for a complete focus build here for uh, light impulse and dark impulse as these are 30% increases to our light and dark value respectively here which would be great to have and then all stats up gives us a plus two levels to everything here so we we go to a, like an SS plus you can think of that here on our mind and willpower which is very nice or you can go for a more standard just mind and willpower up which will give you one level instead of two 
but it will be all the time as opposed to situational. So kind of uh, however you want to go about thinking about that. And then I-Core Focus, um, this will help give you 10 I-Core upon focus. So as soon as you get focused, you can use something like Elemental Wall or something else uh, if you're kind of out of that, out of those abilities. So as we run in here, uh, the Lightning Brionic is the highest drain rating possible on a weapon. And so we're going to pair up with that so we get quick mobility here. We could go for the uh, drain version um, to give us normal mobility if we don't want swift destruction here. So we can go for a more focus centered setup here. So if we head on in, we want to go for our uh, resistances here. So we have above 160 on both elements. Uh, that is crucial to our survival here. And if we do this and we look at our resistances, so we are way high over the limit. And remember for her, uh, it doesn't matter. We just go for um, any of our uh, flame gifts here. Okay, I can't hit her because she's jumping everywhere. Okay. Can't hit her. Can't hit her. There we go. Okay. And, and we are focused now. So we got 10 I core. Okay, we're getting staggered all over the place. Okay. Okay. And we gotta keep an eye on the elemental wall here. So you can see that elemental wall is over. Okay. And we need to wait for that to come up. There we go. Oh, and we got hit in the face. Now he's coming over here, so that's really bad because he can hit us. And we don't want to be hit at all. So we'll go for some strike there. And we'll get focused in the pool. Come on. There we go. And we're focused now. So we got 10 extra I core. Okay. And go for a uh, gift extension if I can get off the ground. There we go. Oops. We got hit. Okay. And elemental wall. Good. Now we go over here and get focused. Oh, okay, go here and get focused. There we go. Okay, good. Okay, and I can't hit anybody any of the time because they both are completely ridiculous. So if you're looking for a good way to uh, get through these two, um, this is one of the best ways to get through here just because of the fact that um, both of them are completely ridiculous. Okay, now we need uh, we need our resistances here. Ouch. Okay. And we need elemental wall. Oh boy. There we go. Okay, now we should be fine. And there we go, we're getting focused again. So we can go ahead and um, hopefully get off the ground, get some i cord here. Okay. Okay, we're, we're getting smacked around quite a bit, so we're focused again, that's good. And we'll go for a couple more attacks there. So if you're going for just a, a regular kind of run against them, I would say go for uh, an elemental resist as this is uh, just above and beyond the ridiculous here. Okay. There we go. And she's gone. Okay, so now we can go for this guy. We'll try and get focused here. There we go. And then for this guy, um, we just go for, you know, all the i -core we can possibly get here. There we go. And we can switch this to a fire veil. There we go. And if we stay back far enough, he will do the uh, fire pools for us to get focused, which is very nice. And we can just sit back here and do this. And the fire doesn't hurt us anymore. Okay. And when we need to get some i -core, we can run in here and wait for the flame pool and get I-Core again, but very nice. And we get our 
30% increase to our damage here, so that's... Whoa. Okay. Uh, that's when uh, Elemental Wall ends. Uh, why that's a problem. <laughs> um, it is a very sharp, uh, drastic increase in your damage. Or in your health loss. Okay. Okay, good. And we can just go for a, a bunch more gifts here. There we go. And let's get focused again. There we go. Now we are below the uh, recommended uh, resistance here, so we are taking uh, damage again. So we'll go for Elemental Wall. And you can see that uh, these two are completely uh, buffed to the heavens on their um, abilities here. So let's go ahead and get focused. Whoops. I don't know why that exploded. Hurt me. There we go. There we go. So that's the way to, uh, you know, maximize your resistance while at the same time maximizing your damage is to, whoops, run a focus build all the time. And uh, if you get to this point in the fight and you, you want to go for some healing, you can go for a Goddess's Smile. Um, and this will help you get back uh, 300 health. And uh, you can just uh, wait for your focus gauge to go down. And uh, you can get focused over and over and over. But, uh, you know, it's kind of not important, but if you're trying to, um, you know, survive and everything. But uh, that's kind of how the fight goes. And you can see that it, uh, it's an actual brutal um, endeavor here to go against both of them. And uh, that's why um, anytime I come to these guys, uh, I typically go for uh, the elemental resists just because of the fact that, uh, you know, this is just overwhelmingly difficult. And you saw when we were getting focused there, uh, we, we had a huge amount of resistance and we could just get ping-ponged around by any of their attacks and it didn't really matter. So having light impulse and dark impulse, having a 30% increase to our, our light and dark value here is very nice for our damage. But then uh, for the dark gifts here, and since the Ivory Grace is non-partial to either one, it, they are uh, equally shared here. And then the light value is for Elemental Wall. So that's why we need high light value is to have a high resistance on fire and ice equally. Um, and then we have these two just for an extra 20 up each. And then again, we have all these here as soon as we get focused because you can use the fire pools to your benefit rather than to your detriment. So it's a it's a nice it's a nice fun fight after you use elemental resistances uh, to um, to take them out because otherwise you're looking at killing 250,000 HP uh, with uh, you know weapon strikes that do 410 or something like. Uh, the Argent Wolf Blade, if you were doing this, 778. So if you do uh, 250,000 just as a quick uh, calculation divided by 778 times 0.9, because uh, they're, weak, they're weak to crush. So you need 357 uh, strikes. <laughs> you need to hit them 357 times without dying, um, basically without getting one shot, without getting hit at all. You have to hit them 357 times in order to kill them. Uh, so that's really, 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 really hard to do. So <laughs> uh, I prefer not to do that and take the easy route. So up to you guys. Uh, but that's their resistance set, their weakness set, and kind of some weird strategies here to go about fighting them. So anyways, uh, that was the Blade Bear and Cannoneer. And uh, next we will be investigating Mito since these are kind of one-off bosses and... Uh, and uh, they're they're a little bit different than um, you. You only get to fight them once through each run. So we'll we'll visit Mido next, and we'll tear him apart, and then we'll uh, move on from there. So thank you all for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.